Hi, my name's Stuart, Stuart Easton. I'm one of the founders uh, at Transparent Choice. And today I'm going to address an issue that um, uh, I get asked about again and again and again. So uh, the foundation for project prioritization is defining what value means. What are the criteria and what's the weighting of those criteria? that we're gonna to use to measure projects and figure out which ones are more valuable than others. And the way we do that is fundamentally different to the way uh, the, the typically PPM tools or spreadsheet tools or whatever it is that you're using right now do this. And, and that difference really matters. Um, the, um, the University of New South Wales, for example, uh, so the New University of New South Wales um, recently did a, a uh, published a paper looking at over a hundred different methods for project project prioritization and their conclusion was that there were only two um, uh, two mechanisms that were or two processes two methodologies that were that were suitable for doing project prioritization one's called DEA and the other is called AHP now I'm going to focus on AHP today. We we looked at these methodologies years ago when we started building Transparent Choice, and we selected AHP, uh, which stands for the Analytic Hierarchy Process. So we we selected AHP years ago, basically because it, it's really powerful, it's really flexible. Um, but, but most of all, it's really, it, it's pretty simple. It's easy to, to, to deploy, it's easy to use, it's easy to understand, it's easy to explain to people. Um, uh, the other thing that we liked about AHP is that it's, re it's really uh, a, a powerful method that allows us to, to drive very structured collaboration. Uh, and that's a really important part of this whole process as well. So what I'm gonna do today is, it's gonna be a really, really short webinar. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is just, just whiteboard out why this matters, right? Why is it that that thing makes a difference? Right? So the University of New South Wales tells us that it does matter. Why? All right, so let's, let's get rid of this. Um, we'll go back to the beginning. So if you think about uh, project prioritization, first of all, all right, there are a number of steps to it. Um, you know, the, first, the first part is we want to, we want to define um, uh, we want to define what our criteria are. And these aren't just any old criteria, these, these are weighted criteria. You're not, all, not all of your business goals, uh, in decision science, the word for, for uh, criterion and the word for business goal are, are pretty much synonymous. Okay, so these are, these are the goals and drivers of your business. This is how you define value. This is how you measure what's valuable. It's not always financial value. Uh, it could be strategic alignment. It could be positioning in the market. It could be about human capital. It could be about all kinds of things. Uh, if you're a government body, it could be about impact on your stakeholder groups. You know, all, all kinds of different ways that you can measure value. Um, and so this is, this is, however you measure value, this is, this is what the criteria are. But not all of those goals are equal. So you need to, you need to have some mechanism for weighting those criteria. And then the next part of the, the, the building, right, we're going to put a little building here, is you're going to, you're going to look at your projects and you're going to score them against those criteria. And, and then you get a weighted score and you have nice little dashboards and we have a beautiful looking building here, right? So this is our temple to project prioritization. So we, we score the projects against the criteria and then we have a whole bunch of charts and graphs that let us uh, figure out what the right portfolio is. And what we're talking about here is, is fundamentally this piece, right? This, yeah, we think we do that better than, than most, and we think we do that better than most, but today's discussion is about the criteria here, and, and, in, and specifically the weighting process for those criteria. This is the foundation on which everything else is built. It's important because if your stakeholders don't believe in this definition of value, then they're not going to believe in the portfolio that you eventually come up with. In fact, um, what we what we often find is, um, you know, what you, what you're trying to do is you you try you know this is this is the size, this is the 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 bucket of resources that you've got available, and um, you know so so what people start doing is that you know you you go through and your exec start you know, your executive team reviews the projects and you start piling projects into this bucket, 
and and you know you're doing it based on your notional scoring system and the, so we got to about here somewhere and the problem is if if the execs don't really believe and trust in your scoring system they're going to look at this and go do you know i don't believe that these projects are the right projects so i'll tell you what i'm just going to jam my project in here and someone else is going to jam theirs in there because they don't really trust the, the scoring system and before you know it you've got you've got a great big pile of projects sticking out the top that you can't possibly deliver you just don't have the resources to deliver and this you know this happens fundamentally because people do not buy into this piece down at the bottom down here the the criteria weighting uh, which which supports the scoring system all right so if you have problems like that if you're having project failure because you've got too many projects if you're having project failure because your executives aren't supporting the projects you know your executive sponsorships weak it's probably because you you've got the wrong projects in there okay so so it all comes back to this step of weighting criteria so why is it so hard i mean come on we've been waiting criteria for years we you know we use spreadsheets we use whiteboards you know we get the team together and we um we write down the criteria and we ask the executives what weight to put on it what's wrong with that well i'm going to answer that in two ways first of all let's pretend we only have one stakeholder right let's keep it simple let's pretend we've got one stakeholder let's put her in here right uh, here she is. Her name's Mary. We're going to give her a pair of eyes. Mary's pretty happy because you've just asked her um, uh, a lovely strategic question, right? You've said, here, Mary, uh, here's the whiteboard. And on this whiteboard, I've written one, two, three, four, five, six criteria. And all you've got to do, Mary, is you've got to give me a percentage for each one of those, right? What's the, what's the percentage weighting for each of those criteria? sounds like a nice simple question i bet you mary gives you a very convincing answer the problem is how mary got there all right so we had six criteria going in and they went right here's a little x-ray of mary right here's her brain Whee! right so here's mary's brain the six criteria go in what's going what's going on in mary's brain well so psychology research and neuroscience research have, have given us a fairly good idea of what's going on in here. Essentially what's happening is that these six criteria are getting, are getting simplified and transformed into a much simpler question, right? Very often that question is something like, um, uh, what was most painful, what's been the most painful thing that's happened to me in the last week, right? That's the most important criteria. Whatever that thing is that, that bit me in the, re the rear last week, maybe a customer rang up and screamed at me or something, Right, that's the thing that is most important to me. And so I'm gonna weight that highest. That may or may not be the most important factor actually, but at that point in time it is. That's something called recency bias. Okay, and there are about 150 of these different biases. Uh, and fundamentally, the human brain never evolved to handle this kind of complex decision. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's something we all suffer from called bounded rationality. Uh, again, it's a, a psychology term, and it, it effectively describes the fact that you know, we can never hold all the information. We never have all the information, but we can never hold and process all the information all at once. So, you know, you can't handle more than two or three. Most people can't handle more than sort of two or three different factors in the decision at a time and still make a rational decision. So what's really happening inside Mary's head is that these six criteria are getting all mushed together. And she, you know, all these biases are kicking in. She's simplifying it with the heuristics. She's not even aware she's doing this. And then she comes out and she says, right, number one, number two, right? So she comes out, she gives you this wonderful list. Wonderful, I mean, the brain is a marvelous thing. If you ask Mary, you know, why she's put these particular numbers on, she'll give you wonderful reasons. But actually she's making it up. She's post-rationalizing um, the, the, the reasons typically. Um, and there've been lots of experiments on this, some great experiments with, uh, uh, with faces and cards and, and, you know, people picking faces and then give them, give them the wrong face, the one they didn't pick. And they'll give you 10 reasons why they picked that face and they didn't pick it right. That post rationalizing. So there's lots of really cool experiments into that kind of stuff. Now, so this is, this is just Mary. All right. Mary's pretty cool. She's, she's all right. You know, I mean, could we live with this? As so long as Mary lives with it and she's the only one we care about, then I could live with that. But unfortunately, she's not. Because we've also got, uh, right, so here's Mary. Right, here's Mary. She's got the big nose and the eyes. Uh, she's not so happy this time. 
because now in the room we've also got John right and John's the typical you know alpha personality um, you know he's got a big mouth yeah, 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 yeah right and he's he's giving it the blah 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 right so John um, is yeah we, we've all seen it as soon as you get a group of people there are dominant personalities and John's one of them and in this particular case John isn't necessarily the expert but he's, he happens to be the most senior person in the room and he has the kind of personality where he's going to exert that that seniority and that power right and so what happens is that the uh, that Mary over here uh, who's lost a bit of her hair let's put some of her hair back in there we go so Mary over here is going to sit in the corner and she's got her mouth shut right she's not saying anything she actually has a lot to say she has a lot of knowledge and insight but because John is the big bully and he's the guy with power she's not going to challenge him so actually what you end up with is not Mary's considered percentages and not not a group consensus something that's informed by the whole group no what you end up with is is basically John's own view of the world uh, or some version of that right so so uh, and John has all these biases as well right so so basically you can see that you know all the people sitting around the table you know, there's a whole bunch of people it's not just John and Mary in the room typically um, all those people are sitting there going well okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take on the CEO but I don't really buy this either right? and and that fundamentally is the problem that we talked about up here at the uh, up here at the top right I don't really buy into it and that's why you end up with people just ignoring the scoring and just trying to jam projects in anyway so how is AHP different well, I'll tell you what let's let's add a new sheet here and um, so what AHP does is instead of saying you know, here are six criteria tell me what the weights are it presents those criteria in pairs A versus B and it asks you to basically you know there's a scale here where you know that's where A and B are equally important and it asks you to put a marker on that scale that says you know I think B is quite a bit more important than A for example okay and and so what we do is we, we have we have Mary does this right so here's Mary again right? give her a big nose so here's Mary right she's happy again she's she's got her voice she's able to kind of come into this thing and place her marker and then here's John all right and uh, oops his eyes are in the wrong place but don't worry right so here's John and he's got his marker right, and he puts it there and, and actually they agree and then and then uh, you know here's here's Martin right Martin's uh, Martin's sitting here and uh, he puts his marker down but he puts his marker over there and so what's happening here is that, that suddenly we can identify you know where the where the areas of agreement are and where the disagreement is and we can have a discussion about this a very a very focused discussion very structured discussion and and what's happening there is that um, the people around the table are building a common language they're building common understanding of the problem right so it turns out that this guy uh, has got some special insight in this particular case that the others didn't have and so the quality of the decision Right, this is decision quality on this axis the decision of the quality is moving up in this direction that's a great thing right we're improving the quality of the decision that's what this is all about but something else is happening because because you're having a very structured conversation people are people are kind of buying into this more right they understand you know if if we're going to make the trade-off in favor of B um, we understand why we're making that trade-off and we've all agreed that you know we, and we all we all buy into that decision right so we're also increasing the buy-in to the to the decision right and ultimately the buy-in to the portfolio that gets selected so we've moved from here up to here and this is really good news because now when we go back to the other page let's just get rid of that okay up here people are buying in oh that's not uh, working properly but people are buying in uh, to the criteria and so they're they're you know, when when they do that they start to really um, uh, support the portfolio that come comes out at the end. All right, so this is this is the bit that AHP does. So it, it this is all about so far it's all about the uh, we've talked about the group dynamic, 
okay the the way that people work together and improve the quality of the decision but the the individual rationality here is better as well because this a versus b decision that they're making is a one-dimensional decision and it's designed you know this is designed with neuropsychology uh, with psychology and neuroscience in, in mind right it's designed specifically to try and eliminate as much bias as they can right so you simplify it so that, that bounded rationality doesn't doesn't play such a role and by presenting just two at a time we're reducing the opportunity for one uh, for the brain to simplify the decision and to allow one factor to dominate or a small number of factors to dominate and uh, and that's really that's really important and then and then when you turn that into the group even if one person you know let's say over here maybe he's been over influenced by something that happened to him last week you know even if he's being influenced these are by that by that one event other people haven't and they're able to kind of point that out and and reel him back in and say do you know that yeah i understand that was really important last week but in terms of our long-term success that's not terribly important so actually, you know, we should all vote over here. And, and so it's eliminating a lot of those systematic um, human uh, errors that, that come into uh, decision making. And that's fundamentally, you know, it's a long way of saying that's fundamentally why um, uh, transparent choice works uh, and, and AHP works. Because the criteria which form the foundations, right here are our projects, and here's the decision making piece, the you know the dashboards and, and the actual portfolio. Um, the 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 um, the foundations are solid. The foundations have support. They have buy-in. So that's about it. It's pretty simple stuff, but it's based on some really solid science. This didn't emerge overnight. This happened over forty years of research, academic research, and it's been validated. In, in areas, uh, lots of decision making areas, not just in, in uh, project prioritization. So thanks for listening. Um, if you'd like to learn more, just get in touch. We'd love to take you through it. Uh, this has all been a little bit academic, but uh, in the real world, it, it's much more practical, hands-on, and, uh, and usually quite a lot of fun. The execs really love this process. So thanks for joining, and I hope to talk to you soon.